I, I think, you know, a lot of African Americans per se at this point, because there has been such a lack of engagement and so far democratic campaigns think that October is the time to reach out to black churches and all of a sudden magically every single African American is going to show up to the polls. Let me tell you something, basics doesn't happen in the black community. We can't even get consultants to do good polls in black areas. Right? So how are you even going to know where we are? Right? So if we've been, and that's been like that since probably Clinton left office. So if it's like that and you haven't engaged us in years, then black folks have started this thought process of, well, this is just the argument of which white person is going to be in charge. And we feel not like we're engaged, not like we're loved, not like we're a part of the process. Again, what's the point of a platform if nobody knows about it? You got three or four different platforms in America. And if you talk about the black platform, if there is a black platform, folks are going to be talking about what is going to pay me. How do I get a job? How do I take care of my kids? How do I work this one job and pay all of my bills? How do I take this one piece of health care, this health care argument, and how does it affect me? In general, progressives have decided that they're going to have these platforms where they talk about their issues within their own bubbles, but not how it relates to the black community. There's no resources going into taking that same $15 hour message, that same health care for all message, and putting it in the hood. This is how it affects black neighborhoods. This is how universal health care will help your life. No one does that. It's a completely missing conversation. And when the conversation does happen, it's at such a high level where the expectation is, see, I said it to you one time, now, time for you to vote. Instead of saying, okay, we're doing deep organizing to make sure that this organizer that we pay is in this neighborhood so Ms. Francis May knows that what $15 an hour means, so that Ms. Susan knows what, what universal health care means. So when somebody says Medicare for all, they have a good understanding of it. Right now, they don't even get engaged. And you wonder why you lose races, 15% of the total vote. You can't win a Democratic primary without black folks. You can't win the presidency without African Americans and Latinos. So if you're not talking to them and you're not delivering your platform to them, then you're completely missing the boat. Thank you. I think that if the Democratic Party wishes to be inclusive, then they need to have the courage to stand up for the communities for the votes that they seek, period. And I think, you know, we, we know what's going on with the Black Lives Matter movement. Rikers Prison is in my district, and the silence is deafening on the fact that we have a living, breathing human rights violation in our land in America. And we're also being told to wait 10 years to close it. We know, we know what's gonna be happening in those next 10 years, and we have the capacity to close it earlier. Um, but then also, you know, as, as a Latina, I think sometimes we need to have greater imagination on what there is to offer the Latino community beyond just immigration reform. Mm -hmm. It's not, <laughs> Latinos is not just immigration reform. And, uh, and even then, the, there has been no immigration reform. So is it a surprise that we don't see the, the animus from Latino voters for the Democratic Party? I'm Puerto Rican, my family's Puerto Rican, and under a democratic administration, we saw the corporate takeover of three million American citizens, and all of their public utilities are being auctioned off to the highest Wall Street bidder. Public utilities are going to, to you know, capital, capital investment co corporations, and we're seeing things like tolls in Puerto Rico. Tolls are being sold off to corporations, and if you think that that is just isolated to the island, it's just a practice run for the next recession to what they're going to do to Detroit, what they're going to do for Birmingham, what they're going to do in the Bronx. It's just batting practice. And so we need to have the courage to stand up, not because we want the votes of communities of color, but because this is a country for everybody and we fight for everybody and we fight for a living wage, we fight for a dignified life for every American. And it's American values that we're fighting for. I love the agitation that's happening. <laughs> I'm going to agitate a little bit more. <laughs> um, so, 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 so. Um, if we look at uh, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Laquan McDonald, Flint, Michigan, 
they've all happened under democratic leadership. Yep. The responses to uh, black people being in the streets, uh, if you see in St. Louis, right, the folks that, that made the decisions to send tanks to tear gas black folks in St. Louis was Democrats. Um, and so I, I think about that, that uh, <laughs> I think about that, that quote, um, I'm like forgetting the name now, but about uh, what we know about, de about li liberalism, right? And, and I think that like, we really need to see bold action and see, like, have, have Democrats have a backbone in order to fight for black people and for other people of color, right? Because we've seen through history that, like, like was said, Democrats have not been on our side, but also, not, not even in the case of not having been on our side, but have also ex have impacted us through violent means, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to be really real about how that, how those impacts, like, uh, isolate a community from actually feeling like the, our needs are being met. Um, and so it's actually requiring uh, of us and outside our movements to really be able to challenge Democrats um, and the right, but especially Democrats, um, to like really hold them accountable to say whether or not you are on our side or are, are, and are you on the freedom side mm -hmm. or are you not, mm -hmm. right? Um, because I think for, for a lot of us, right, this is a life or death issue and, our, and uh, political parties, politics is a life or death issue. And for, for us in the last few years, I think it, the, the crisis has even, has even got, gotten higher. And so I think for in relationship to the movements and agendas and, and uh, the, the, the reality of uh, democratic representation of black and brown people, I think folks need to have a backbone and that we need to be able to uh, hold their feet to the fire. I'm, I'm gonna keep on the, um, the context of agitation of Brother Dante, because I'm pretty agitated with the Democratic Party, I have to be honest. Um, I think African-Americans in particular, African-American women specifically in particular, mm -hmm. have gotten a worse return on investment from the Democratic Party than anyone that got screwed over by Bernie Madoff, period. Um, been close to 50 years of steadfast electoral loyalty and, 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 and the return on investment has not been good. So I, I have to start there. Um, yes, Hillary lost, but before Hillary lost, Brother Bernie lost too, for many of the same reasons. And I have to say, like, while I'm on camera and to this room, that, like, I need white progressives instead of spending so much time trying to convince people of color that Bernie's not racist, which is something we don't say. We just said he had a POC outreach problem. And use that energy to talk to Bernie and be like, yo, you got a POC outreach problem? Like, I mean, when people of color are telling you something, it's a good idea to listen to them, you know, because they kind of know what they're talking about when issues are affecting them. Well. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, it's easy to talk a lot of crap when you only got one person you got to deal with. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the Democratic Party did pass the 1964 Civil Rights Act, 1965 Voting Rights Act, TRIO, Head Start, Older Americans Act, Medicare, Medicaid, um, oh, the Affordable Care Act, the Consumer Financial Products Bureau, Lilly Ledbetter, Equal Pay Act. DACA, DAPA, I could, I mean, you know, look, but, but it's saying, having said all that, having said all that, I'll be among the first to say the Democratic Party is not what I want it to be or what it should be. I'll be among, I'll sign me up for that. For, that's why I ran for chair. That's why I accepted to be deputy chair of the Democratic Party, because I believe that it can be more than it. We're trying to convert the party into a grassroots, every race, every day party. And that's what we're trying. It's not going to be easy. But I'm going to say this, and I'm going to piss you off now. It cannot be done with just cynicism. Mm -hmm. Talking about what sucks mm -hmm. won't change it. Mm -hmm. But taking what sucks, mm -hmm. and many things do, I agree, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and saying we're going to fix them things mm -hmm. can bring us mm -hmm. a whole new reality. That's right.